According to a survey by AARP and the National Institutes of Health, two-thirds of people between uh, ages 50 and older use some form of alternative medicine, such as supplements. Our next guest says there are 10 that every older adult should have in their medicine cabinets. And Dr. Vandana, Vandanya Bide is a physician with St. Augustine Adult and Pediatric Medicine. Good morning to you, Dr. Bide. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Stacy, for having me this A morning. lot of people taking a lot of supplements, mm. but some of them have been proven that you don't really need them. But you've narrowed it down to the ones that right. you feel are most effective. Right. These are the ones that studies show that there is some health benefit. I'm going to start out with what I call sort of the superstar of vitamins, which is vitamin D. Vitamin D has been shown to reduce the risk of high blood pressure, diabetes, and certain cancers. Typically, you'll find it in combination with calcium, as you see here. And by the way, I just want to mention, I'm not endorsing any of these products. These are just examples of what's available. It's typically found in combination with calcium. And of course, that's important for healthy bones. Especially for women. Exactly. How, how exactly. many should you be taking a day? Typically you should take at least 500 or 600 milligrams of calcium twice a day and 200 international units of vitamin D twice a day. Okay. Uh, and how many pills is that? <laughs> typi thinking, typically, uh, it's one pill twice a day. When they come in combination, it's typically one pill twice a day. Okay. Next is the glucosamine and chondroitin. Right. And I thought right. I had read the, that theory that they actually worked for arthritis had been debunked. But you're saying no. Right. It's, there's a specific study called the GATE study, which was... Um, done in different kinds of arthritis and in combination with and without chondroitin. And so what was found is the combination of glucosamine and chondroitin helps reduce the pain of moderate to severe arthritis. So people with mild arthritis may not benefit, but certainly the patients who have more severe arthritis will. All right, let's talk about omega-3s. You hear mm -hmm. a lot about these. That is the uh, fatty acid found in things like salmon and right. other big right. fish. Right, so fatty fishes like tuna, mackerel, sardines. But if you're not somebody who gets those kinds of fish in your diet twice a, uh, twice a month, or sorry, twice a week, um, then the supplement is an option. And this also helps um, joints, especially patients who have rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, it's also been uh, shown to help improve memory, which a lot of people use for. But what it's really known for, of course, is increasing your good cholesterol, lowering your bad cholesterol, and lowering your triglycerides, in, in, which are fats in your bloodstream. All right, let's talk about what Richard Nunn calls nature's broom, sweep, 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 and that's fiber. How much right. fiber should you be getting right. every day? Typically 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. And unfortunately, most of us don't get that naturally in our diet. Um, and so fiber supplements are an alternative. They also help lower your cholesterol, and they're good for your colon. Um, and they're what, good for filling you up. You feel a little bit right, fuller every right, day after right, you eat right. them. What's important, though, is if you're going to take fiber, um, it's important to drink enough water. So at least eight glasses of water so that you don't get sort of bound up with the, the, <laughs> the fiber. The un... Um the unfortunate part right. of too much fiber. Exactly. Um, probiotics, those have really been talked about mm -hmm. a lot over the past few years. What are those? Right. Well, Stacy, probiotics are good bacteria, sort of what we call the friendly bacteria that already live in our colon. So for optimal colon health, you want to have the normal bacteria um, that, that live in your large intestine. And then sometimes when you get a stomach virus or if um, you're taking antibiotics, that will kill the good bacteria. And so probiotics will re replenish the good bacteria that already live there and help offset some of the side effects, especially with antibiotics. Okay, I want to get to the last ones here quickly. Aspirin, how many milligrams a day should you take? The oh, aspirin, um, anywhere between 70 and 81 milligrams okay. is what's recommended. Lutein is what? Right, lutein is an antioxidant that has been shown to decrease um, and in some cases prevent vision loss from age-related macular degeneration. Okay. And then finally, sunscreen. Everybody's got to have it. Do you recommend right. taking supplements or should you try to eat the natural foods that contain these? Right. Absolutely. You should always take um, uh, natural foods, natural intake of all of these vitamins. And in some cases, vitamin studies have shown that the supplements are not nearly as beneficial as getting it naturally in your diet. But these ones um, do, do show benefit. And of course, if you're not getting it naturally in your diet, which is ideal, then this is an alternative. Got to get it some way. Dr. Right. Bide, right. thank you for joining us this morning to talk about the 10 things you should have in your medicine cabinet, if you, especially if you're over the age of 50. Thank you. Thanks so much, Stacey.